let us send the uh, in input message and the carrier waveforms. So we have connected uh, connected the probe for the channel one and channel two. So now let us observe channel one. So this channel one, channel two. These are the knobs for changing channel one or channel two options. So now it is indicating channel one. So this channel one. The frequency is displayed as 1 kilohertz. Amplitude is displayed as 20 volt peak to peak. So now let us fix the amplitude and the frequency required. So before that, uh, see that the channel one, uh, the on off button is enabled. Now let us start uh, fixing the frequency. So frequency, it is displayed 1 kilohertz. So now I want to change it to 2 kilohertz. Two choose the kilohertz range so now it is displaying 2 kilohertz now let us set the amplitude amplitude let us fix 2 volt peak to peak peak to peak and see that the offset is 0 so the offset 0 volt if, if not 0 we can set it to 0 volt so this is 0 now the signal message signal frequency of 2 kilohertz and amplitude 2 volt peak to peak is set now let us set the carrier frequency Carrier frequency is a high frequency signal. So let us uh, connect a channel 2. So this channel 2 should be enabled. So for the channel 2, I am changing the option as channel 2. See the display is channel 2. Now we want 11 kilohertz and 15 volt peak to peak. So for fixing the amplitude, click on the amplitude knob. And uh, so see that it is not high or low. It should be amplitude knob. 15 volt peak to peak. This is the amplitude. And for changing the frequency, fix the frequency as 11 kilohertz 11 kilohertz so now we have fixed the required amplitude and the frequency for the carrier wave now let us observe these waveforms in the digital storage oscilloscope so before that we have to connect the positive of the message signal to the 10 kilo ohms resistance at the emitter the oscilloscope digital storage oscilloscope positive channel positive channel to be connected the positive channel of uh, the red knob the positive to be connected to the same series connection where we are giving the message so we have connected the message signal the same series connection so now we are going to observe the message waveform in the digital storage oscilloscope so let us observe the waveform now i am running it so let us click on auto scale auto scale so this is the message waveform so now we want to do the measurement for the signal so let us click on measure option so it is automatically displaying the amplitude and the frequency the amplitude is 2 volt frequency displayed is 2 kilohertz so now uh, let us observe from the beginning so i will clear the measurement clear all click clear all so the now i want to uh, set the amplitude and the frequency measurement so go to add measurement add measurement here measurement type change so i can move the knob and change fix the amplitude so now amplitude of the waveform is added now type of the waveform change it to frequency frequency i am clicking on the frequency knob now frequency is added so now the amplitude and the frequency is displayed this is for the message wave we have got the message required amplitude and the frequency now let us observe the carrier wave now I am connecting the positive of the digital storage oscilloscope to the series connection where we have connected the carrier signal. So we have connected the carrier signal to the other end of 1 kilo ohms resistance at the base. So this 1 kilo ohms resistance at the base I am connecting the DSO positive. So now let us give auto scale. Press auto scale. So this is the observed carrier waveform. So the carrier waveform, we see that the amplitude is 15 volt, what we have set, and the frequency is nearly 11 kilohertz. So this is the carrier waveform amplitude and the frequency. Now we have to observe the output signal, the AM modulated signal. So for this, we are going to connect the DSO positive to the collector. The series connection where we have connected the connected the collector we have connected the collector at the output now click on auto scale so now adjust this horizontal knob 
So this is our AM signal, AM waveform. So this is the AM waveform. So if you want to slightly smoothen the waveform, so we can slightly adjust the frequency of the message waveform here. So I am changing the carrier, the channel 1 option, I am slightly adjusting the frequency, frequency of the input signal, I am just slightly reducing it to 1 kilohertz. So now let us observe the AM output. So this is a perfect AM output. Now let us make the measurement for the Vmax and Vmin calculation in order to calculate the practical modulation index. So our theoretical modulation index M equal to Vm by Vc. The Vm value what we have chosen is 2 volt peak to peak and uh, Vc value we have chosen is 15 volt peak to peak. So the theoretical modulation index M equal to 0.133. Vm by Vc is 2 by 15 which is 0.133. Now let us calculate what is Vmax and Vmin using the practical modulation index formula. So now let us observe Vmax and Vmin. So for calculating Vmax and Vmin use measure option. Sorry, uh, the cursor option. Now we will use cursors X, uh, Y1 and Y2. So Y1 fix Y1 cursor fix the Y1 cursor and uh, move the cursor button see this cursor option is moving I am going to measure the maximum Vmax maximum at the both positive and the negative ends now I am changing the cursor to Y2 and <coughs> fix it here now move the cursor cursor option so I am fixing I am measuring positive to the negative maximum values now let us see the display del y del y is the difference of the two peaks positive and negative peaks which is around 1.568 volts so this is twice of Vmax twice of Vmax what we want is Vmax so this value we can divide by 2 to get Vmax value and now let us see the Vmin measurement for Vmin measurement Again, I am going to change the cursor, keep it at the beam in negative and uh, cursor again I am choosing Y1 cursor and changing the cursor, this is beam in. So this is beam in measurement. So this difference is around 1.13. So this is our twice of beam in. So from this we can calculate Vmax and beam in and then we will find the practical M value which is nearly 0.171.